Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, <clears throat> excuse me, Dow Industrials right now trading up at 387. We get the Nasdaq up 321. s and is up 65. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as you do each and every Tuesday. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see it right under Featured Content. You just hit that opening call button. You hit subscribe. You can get Basil's opening call for $149 for one month. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You can get it for a year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get it for a month. You'll like it. That's awesome. You, you'll continue to be in charge. If for some reason it doesn't work for you, guess what? Get your money back. And Basil has approximately 10 to 12 great archives that as soon as you get the newsletter, you can go through all the archives and really understand how this market moves, how those waves move. It's a beautiful thing. Basil Chapman, how you doing? I'm well. How are you doing? Good, man. And thank you for doing my show yesterday. Appreciate it, man. Oh, that was my pleasure. Thank you. So what are we looking at? You know, it's very interesting talking about waves. <clears throat> when we're looking at this chart, here on the left is the Dow Daily, in the middle is the weekly, and the monthly chart is the, uh, the uh, on the right is the monthly chart. <clears throat> so sometimes we get very large waves, but if the tide is moving up, always think of, of, a, of a boat, say it's in the docks or it's in the harbor, and the boat, the tide is moving up, <clears throat> the boat is going to move up. So when the tide is coming down, you can see the tide moving down by the boat. And essentially what we're looking at here is in the larger trend of the daily and the weekly, not the monthly yet, the tide has turned to down and therefore every rally starts to fail and gets harder and harder. But the pattern that I love to look at, and I spent a little time in my show uh, this morning in my Tiger Technicians Hour, just talking about a different technical tools that I use. So when we made that peak D, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave at 36,952 uh, back on the 5th of January, we made a little pattern that I call the dreaded H, a little H pattern that failed and came all the way down to 33,150 on the 24th of January. Then we started to rally. And what I said, and I've been saying this basically for quite some time, and it's really hard to give, sometimes experience kind of is in the forefront of your mind, but you have to really dig deep to say, where did I get that and what does it mean? So I thought I'd just take a moment here and explain what I was looking at. Because this 200, I mean, this is the daily chart of the Dow. We can yes. do this on any of the indexes. It doesn't really matter. So right. I'm opening it up. <clears throat> and what I said on my show, and I'll do it again tomorrow in, in a slightly different way, is that if you use moving averages, and, and because of the very nature of what they are, they, they're lagging indicators. But moving averages, I find, are extremely important just to give a sense of, either direction or support or resistance. So this, this orangey colored thicker line at the bottom here is the 200 period exponential moving average. And look how many times I actually, maybe I'll do that right now because I think it's really worth it. There are a lot of people that are looking at your show that weren't looking at mine. So let's just do this. I'm gonna squeeze this so I can get a longer term uh, picture. There it is. So now if I go back further enough, look, when we were up at the 35,000 level back in May of 2021, did I care about the 200 period moving average? Not at all. But look at this. I'm moving it to the to to the left here. Now we get to that whole October 2020. Yes. We get to that period, and look how many times it held the 200. Oops! Stop! Stop! <laughs> it's always hard to get this. Oh! oh, oh. Put the brakes on there. Yeah, we see it. It's so, awesome. Yeah, I, I can. Isn't that amazing? So no. look, it and, and I was this listening resistance. to your show this morning, so it was cool because I heard, I heard this this morning, which is nice. So it's, yeah, isn't it yeah, fascinating it how is. it becomes a springboard? So I have to respect the fact. Now I'm going to move all the way to the right. I have to. Respect Respect the fact that we have now gone from it being not even anything I would talk about in the near term to something that is very important. And as you can see, as I'm moving along, we almost hit it back in September of 2021, and then we ran in a buy mode all the way to 36,500s, pulled back, 
to the line 34,022, December the 1st. Isn't that amazing? That ran up to another four peaks higher. Yeah. And now we've pulled back. This time we broke under it. So I respect this as a tool. In fact, I'll show you right now, live, we can do this, and I'll show you. This is the, the two-minute chart. Look how important the 200-period moving average has been in the same regard. It was support, and then it became resistance. And look, it became resistance at about 2.10 this, this afternoon, Eastern Time. Then it became support, and we still kept going up. And even now, the green line hasn't turned under the, the 14. So I don't have to worry about the 200 period. So I treat it with respect. Let's just put it that way. It's just a tool that I use when I need it. I need it. When I don't, I don't. So now let's move this away and say there's a pattern that I'm looking at, and that is the arch formation, that if it holds quite nicely after a very strong takeoff uh, phase, which was from the 33,150 on the 25th or 24th of January, there's a there's a pattern that I look at, and this once again, it kind of goes back to experience, but it's also look trend line. Look, we held the 200 period moving average, we're rallying. So the pattern I said that I thought we would be, and I'm going to show this because I had a caller about three weeks ago, and I said the pattern I'm looking at in the S and P is the lowercase H. That this H pattern right here, the arch, okay. that if it holds around the 200 period moving average, could see another rally. So essentially, we're in a rectangle formation using up time. If we can survive whatever the Fed says tomorrow, whatever happens tomorrow, and Thursday, we actually rally even just a little bit higher in the S&P and the Dow without pulling back very much at all, but we go higher than today's high, then I have to say, you know what, it's just going to wear all the bulls and the bears out. But then I think we've got to be careful because this pattern says then be careful when it's completed because you could have a retest of the previous major low. So I'm just those are the parameters. In the meantime, I've got subscribers. We, we've raised cash. We've got some low price stocks. That don't, I don't call them cheap because uh, it has to do with PE and all other things, but they're low priced. They're in areas that I think are kind of missing what's going on here in the bigger picture. They're looking out further, um, sorry, in the near-term picture, but they're looking out further. It's looking to socialize and getting out, parents taking kids to outdoor activities. Yeah, the great um, breakout, and, no doubt, yeah. And that's what I'm looking at. So we've got uh, some low price. I even had a hotel stock that I thought was holding well. We got out of it very quickly because I was a little afraid of the market. But have a look at this. Yes, Marriott. Why on earth is Marriott at an all-time high? Marriott Hotels, I'm going to mention the word again, hotels? I mean, this is, you know what I'm saying? Look at this. Yes, yes, the steel stocks. Doing quite nicely. Why is Alcoa doing so? Alcoa is almost at a high. It's, a, I mean, yesterday was a high. So I'm saying that this is a very bifurcated market. There's a fixation on other things. I am still, I am like you. I heard you talking about this a moment ago. I'm still somewhat worried about the semiconductors. They should be leading. They're not leading up. They're leading down. So, the you know, SMHs has to break into the uh, 300 area for me to say, wow, we yeah. managed to. And so this is very important. It's a very important phase. We've raised cash. We're watching things very closely. And we've got some low price stocks that should do as well as the same particular sector at a higher level. So I think, we, I think I'm comfortable with that right now. And folks, it's very easy to get his newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right on the front page. You open and call. You just hit that button. Bows, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank Tom, you. you too.